Hi guys, welcome back to the desktop for another rules breakdown. And this time I'm going to be doing D6 Space. Now this is just the updated rule system for the D6 system from West End Games, which came out in 2004. It's going to be very similar to the Star Wars system that we did a few weeks ago, but there's some interesting updates to the rules, and I thought it might be handy for people to go over these so they can see whether they like them and can incorporate them into their Star Wars games if they like it, or even just for them to use the D6 Space system. Because it is now open source, before West End Games went out of business, finally, it open source all of its D6 rule books and you can download them on the internet legally and use them to this day. Skills. Very similar to the other D6 games, if we open up the character sheet here, we can see that all of the skills and attributes have dice codes. This is just sample characters, there's not actually anything on any of the skills, your skill points remain to be spent. Now, for example here, agility, which includes acrobatics, brawling, dodge, firearms, melee combat, running, sleight of hand and throwing, all have a base of three dice plus one. Now if you've got any skill points in them, they add to that, so you're rolling a total number of that many dice plus pips. So three dice plus one, we choose three dice. Now one of those dice is always a wild die. And if you roll a six on the wild die, then you add the six to your total and you re-roll the wild die. And as long as you keep rolling sixes, you keep rolling and adding. As soon as you stop rolling a six, you stop adding. Likewise, if you roll a one, the Games Master has two options. One is to take away your highest dice. So let's roll here. We roll a one. The five gets taken away. So they actually only have a total of three. Or... The total can stand, so it's eight, but a complication occurs. So the Games Master can introduce something like your blaster jams if you're using it, you trip when you're running, something else exciting happens in the storyline, and that allows the Games Master to customise the game according to your dice roll, bringing in something interesting or funny. But that's how the skills work, it's simple enough, you roll the number of dice, that the die code indicates, so three dice here, add up the totals, so there's eight, and there's a plus one on there, so it's nine. Initiative remains unchanged from earlier versions, although it is slightly simplified. Basically, you're rolling your perception attribute. So three dice plus one here, we roll three dice, and we get seven, 13, 14. So this person has 14 for their initiative this round, so they go after anybody with 14 or higher, so 15 higher, and they go before anybody who's got 13 or lower. And it's as simple as that. In the event of ties, then it's whoever has the highest perception. If it's their tied as well, it goes down to search and so on through a bunch of skills until we find out who is the faster. But that's as simple as initiative is. You're just rolling your perception skill, highest roll goes first. The combat system likewise is just as simple, although it's got some little complications in here because of range. But basically, you're rolling your combat skill. So if you're shooting at someone, you roll your firearms. So again, going with this character, three dice plus one. So we roll 15, 16 for the plus one. So they were going to hit anybody depending on their range. So for somebody in close combat, the range is 5, further away 10, getting to extreme distances 15 or 20. And somebody who is attempting to dodge, they roll their dodge skill and they add it to the range. So if he's getting shot at, he rolls his dodge skill. He only gets 6, 7, plus, let's say, it's uh, slight range, so a 5, so he gets a 13. If anybody beats a 13, then they get to hit him. And that's as simple as hitting in combat is. If you're taking multiple actions, then you lose a dice for every extra action. So if you decide you're going to shoot and dodge, or shoot and shoot, then you're only going to be rolling two dice for this character. So two dice plus one, and he gets nine, ten. 
And that's as simple as combat is. You lose dice for multiple actions. You are rolling against a target number to hit based on the range of the target or the difficulty to operate of the weapon, as some weapons do have a difficulty. But that is getting added to by the target's dodge if they are dodging. In hand-to-hand -hand combat, you're using brawling, and that counteracts brawling, so two people punching at each other will counteract by um, rolling their brawling skills against each other. But in long uh, range combat, it's firearms and dodge. Likewise, damage is very simple. If we flick onto the equipment section, which should be around about page 109. We can see firearms here. And we've got um, armor earlier, which we'll come to in a second. And depending on weapon, what weapon you're using, you're rolling a certain amount of dice for the damage. So you're using a handgun, a heavy semi-automatic pistol, you're rolling five dice plus one. So we get five dice. We roll it. We add up the total. 10, 13, 14. And plus one. Yep, that's including the plus one, so 14 damage. Now... The character who's getting hit is going to roll their strength to resist. So this character was three dice plus one. Plus we can look and see if they're wearing any armor. So we go back to the last page and we've got armor. So if somebody's wearing synth level armor, they're adding plus two to their roll. If they've got hard leather, they're adding one dice plus one. So Rolling this character, they get plus two. They've got a strength of three dice plus one, we remember. So they are now rolling four dice because three pips equal a dice. So when you add the two pips from the armor to the one dice he's already got, that adds up to an extra dice. Your rolls, 10, 15, 21. And that exceeds the damage, the 14 damage. So this character has resisted that damage. And that's as simple as it is. Now, damage in D6 space is handled in two ways. One is the old wound levels of the older versions of the game, where, depending on how much the damage roll exceeds your resistance roll, you take a wound level. So if you are taken... The damage exceeds your resistance roll by one to three points, you take a stun. Four to eight points, you take a wound. 4 to 8 points again, you become severely wounded. 9 to 12 points, you become incapacitated. 13 to 15 points, you become mortally wounded. And if it exceeds it by 16 or more, you're dead. Now, each of these has a different effect. If you're stunned, you will receive one, minus 1d one to all actions this round and next round. If you take a wound, you take minus 1d to all actions until healed. If you've gone up to severely, then it's minus 2d. If it's incapacitated or further, basically you're on the ground and you can't really do anything. Um, incapacitated, if you make a stamina or willpower roll, you can carry on, but at a minus 3d penalty. Now, that's how those work, but the system also has body points. If we flick back to here, page 14, it details how the body points work. And body points act like hit points. So if your damage roll exceeds your resistance roll by four points, you take four body point damage. And your body points are worked out when you're creating your character by rolling your strength, so three dice plus one, and adding 20. So three dice plus one for this uh, sample character. If we go back, we can see he's got a strength of three dice plus one. So we roll three dice plus one. That's a rather good roll, even though it fell into the crevice there. So he's got seven, 13, and he's rolled a six. So 16 add 20, he has 36 body points. So basically 36 hit points. Now going back to the character sheet, if we look here, we can see that there's wound levels, which ordinarily are checked off. Now have a body points range. And if we go to page 76, we can see how these are calculated. Flicking onto page 76, we can see the wound levels. 
So depending on when you've got 80 to 60% of your uh, body points left, you're stunned. 59 to 40% you're wounded. 39 to 20% severely wounded. 19 to 10% incapacitated. 1% to 9% you're mortally wounded. And at zero, you are dead. And that's how you calculate them out. Obviously, there's a wee bit of work ahead calculating out exactly what 80 to 60% is. And you mark them on your character sheet to show the range of when you fall to those levels and take those penalties for being wounded. Character advancements, very similar to the older versions of the Star Wars role-playing game as well. Basically, you are spending a number of character points, which are rewarded each adventure, equal to the dice size of your skill. So, if you're improving a skill from 3 dice 1 plus 1 to 3 dice plus 2, you're spending 3 character points. Now, attributes can also be improved, but they cost 10 times. So, you are spending 10 times. So, you're increasing your strength from 3 dice plus 1 to 3 dice plus 2. You're spending 30 character points. And when you reach a plus 2, moving up to what would be a plus 3, you're moving up to another dice size. So, 3 dice plus 2 becomes 4 dice when you improve it by one level, and the costs go up from three points to four points to improve it from there. Now, D6 space also has advantages and disadvantages, and these costs to gain or lose as well. So, for buying a new advantage, you're paying five times the rank of the advantage. So, if the advantage is at level two, you are paying ten points to gain that advantage. And to lose a disadvantage, you are paying 10 points for the cost of it. So if it's a rank 2 disadvantage, you are paying out 20 points to get rid of it. And that's advancement. So that's a quick look at D6 Space. As I said, it's a very similar game to the earlier D6 games, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, and the others. It's a fun system. I really like the D6 system, as I've stated before. It's fast. It gets out of the way. It's a whole load of fun. And although it's not the most detailed system, D6 Space does make massive improvements on bridging that gap by adding advantages and disadvantages and allowing you to custom make your characters a bit more. But, as always, thank you very, very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe because it helps me out a lot. It would be a massive favour to me. But most of all, you look after yourselves and I'll catch you later. Bye now.